Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get started at 6.32. Um, we'll have, I'm sure, a few more families uh, joining us as we go through our uh, webinar this evening. Um, just to frame the, um, the purpose for tonight, a, a half hour or so of some updates, uh, foreshadowing information that, that maybe is uh, useful on the horizon and uh, we'll do the best we can to keep up with Q&A as we go. So community members, if you look at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there's a Q&A button. If you have a question, um, please feel free, free to drop it in there. We'll, we'll do the best we can to keep up. Um, we have disabled the, the chat feature. Um, we'll, we'll be pushing information out, uh, links to uh, websites that are uh, perhaps useful, um, but we won't be having two-way communication through the, the chat feature tonight. Um, before we go too much further, I want to say thank you to the uh, administrative team who is with me tonight. Uh, Mrs. Pomfret is our uh, school counseling director. Uh, Amy Manaval is one of our assistant principals. Isabella Yearwood, assistant principal. Adam Daniels, administrative intern. And Troy Washington, assistant principal. They're going to be um, pitching in with some of the, the slides and the information, but also um, working in the chat feature. This is the third or fourth of the um, community webinars we've done uh, this school year, if I include the, the webinars that we did over the summer. Um, hopefully they're of use. Um, the, the participation rates have ranged from about 30 to over 300. Um, if you think these are useful, let us know in, in, the, um, in the survey at the end or through the Q&A feature if these are good for you. Uh, to get useful information, great, let us know. And if, if they're not, that's fine. We, we, we don't have to keep doing them. Um, so just let us know if this is meeting any of your needs as we go through the, the school year. Um, here's our agenda for tonight. I'm going to start by congratulating our uh, girls basketball team for making the state tournament. Um, we have had a lot of success in athletics and other activities, including performing arts this school year. We're proud of uh, our students, their, their hard work and their accomplishments, but obviously that's uh, that's one group of students that uh, were prominent recently. As far as the agenda goes, uh, we've got some reminders, information about the end of the third grading period. We have a graduating class this year, so we're going to start the, uh, the final approach to graduation with some important information for our families. Um, spring testing, advanced placement, SOL exams, uh, are all on the horizon. So we'll talk a little bit, a little bit about those and summer, but really fall athletics. We have information about that too. So that's on the agenda and we'll move forwards. Some reminders. Um, this is one of those times a year in, uh, in high schools where the, the little details add up and become um, important to adhere to. So we're asking our community for help in uh, reinforcing that cell phones are not to be used um, during class periods for uh, by our students unless the teacher sets a, a specific task for students to use their cell phones. So thank you for reinforcing that if you're able to. Um, based on some of the community feedback we've had in these um, in these webinars, in fact, we have added a, a day of activity buses. So Thursdays, um, activity buses will pick up students for an express bus route after school. The bus stops are on our website. Um, the buses leave Gainesville High School around 4.45. Mr. Daniels, is that accurate? Uh, 4.45 departure, um, yes. just to try and help students have one day of the week where they can um, go to a club meeting, get extra help, et cetera, and there's uh, transportation provided. Um, the converse of that is, um, is that we have a large number of students who are here after school. That's good. Um, but some of our students are still here actually right now. I walked past a couple of students as I came into the building who were waiting for a ride to get home and supervision becomes obviously a concern. So if, uh, if students do have activities after school, um, please try to arrange carpooling or, or, or rides that, that pick students up at a reasonable time by about 4, 4 p.m., 4.45 on activity bus days um, so that we can ensure our students are safe and supervised um, during normal business hours. Um, we've had some students on campus who were not following um, driving etiquette, let's say. 
um, driving faster than they should be or um, not abiding by um, conventions of staying in lane and so on and so forth. Um, I'm, I'm letting our community know that when we see those students, we're addressing them. Uh, a couple of students have lost driving priv privileges for a period of time. Um, students who don't have parking passes and, and are violating um, traffic etiquette on campus run the risk of either being towed or having their car booted also. So don't want to be mean-spirited, um, but it is important for everybody's safety that our students are are careful um, if they're taking the responsibility to, to drive to school. Also, food deliveries. Um, parents, if you want to bring food for your children um, during the school day, you're always welcome at Gainesville High School. Um, please don't send Uber um, or, um, or any other food delivery service to the school to drop off. We've had uh, delivery drivers um, trying to gain access to the building indoors other than the main entrance. Um, we've had food dropped off at the main entrance and we don't have the staff then to hand deliver it to students um, through the building. So please, parents, if you're bringing food, fine, no problem. Please don't send or, or remind your students not to order a, del a food delivery service to bring it to the school. Okay, moving on from there. Um, an interesting update is uh, BARC. Um, parents, if, if you're unaware of what BARC is or what it does, um, the school system uses an enterprise version of this application to scan uh, student outlook email. So the students, uh, principal and county schools email accounts are scanned by BARC for um, um, statements or messages that are concerning, um, things that may relate to drug use, profanity, um, self-harm, those kinds of things. And we get alerts and respond to those alerts if, um, if students are using principal and county schools platforms for that type of communication. And obviously we'll reach out to parents um, as needed if, if those alerts come through. BARC has an application that can be downloaded on cell phones, um, student cell phones that will essentially scan communication and other uh, use of the device, not for every single app, but for a large suite of apps and it's a way of giving parents visibility in terms of their child's use uh, of their cell phone. Um, I, I don't have um, a child in my household that is using this app right now. One of my friends and neighbors is, and they're uh, a fan of the app. They, they feel that it's been helpful for, for them in monitoring their child uh, as they learn to responsibly use cell phone and social media, et cetera. Um, there are two versions of the, um, the consumer app. Bark Jr. can allow you to manage screen time, block certain websites and apps, and get location alerts. That is free uh, to our families. Principal in County Schools is, um, has, able, has been able to um, leverage a, a discount from, I think, $100 a year down to $80 a year for the premium application that has obviously more bells and whistles and monitoring features. So um, parents, if that's of interest to you, the, you can scan the QR code, it'll take you to more information. Um, our experience um, with and working with students with cell phones, as cell phones have pro proliferated, obviously society over the last decade or so, is that it's helpful for parents to have visibility of the things that students are posting, sharing, um, messaging, um, because um, it's a world that's hard to, to, to be involved in and monitor. So, so tools like this may be of use to our families. So that's the, the, the plug for the BARC application if it's of interest to you. Uh, I'll now pass along to Mrs. Pomfret, who tells us a little bit about the end of the third grading period. Yep. So our third barking period here ends in about a week and a half on March 31st. And then we roll right into spring break. Um, parents, please note on your calendars that that Monday that we return is actually a teacher work day. So your students um, will not be coming into the building that day. Please be monitoring your child's grades in parent view. Um, and don't just use the application on your phone. There's also a lot of information that you can get from the website, um, including pretty um, important feedback so you can monitor your child's growth and progress. So I do encourage you to look at that. Um, we have been given some data to, 
that shows that the paper online tutorial program that Prince William County Schools has been utilizing is quite successful and students are seeing great um, results from it. So we do encourage you if your child's struggling, um, they can't stay after school, they need a little bit more support. This is a 24 hours, seven days a week tool um, with a live person on the other end, they can chat through paper. So please take a look at it. It's a, it's a great tool that our, our school system is providing if your child needs help. There's also always Khan Academy, which we really recommend for SAT prep, but also has some really good tools for supporting students. Um, it depends on certain subject areas. Teachers know they like better than others. Um, papers, a definite and definitely Khan Academy for SAT and PSAT preparation. Um, if you have specific questions about your child's progress and possibly their grading um, procedures and policies, I do encourage you to contact the teachers directly with questions via email is always the easiest, but you can also always call and leave a message. Um, but if you've got any concerns, you know, definitely be asking. Um, we wanted to support your child and ensure they have a good uh, finish to their school year here. And I'm actually going to hand it off to Ms. Yearwood to talk a little bit about the class of 2023 and our first graduation. Hi, good evening. I'm really excited for our inaugural graduation, and we've been updating a lot of information. If you see at the top, it says the grad 2023 link. If you go on our website, I think Ms. Manival just put it in the chat as well. On our website under About Us, it says Info for Seniors, and I think it's also on the announcements. And there's lots of information there about location, um, cap and gowns, so a lot of the things that we're gonna talk about um, and, and questions that some seniors have. Graduation is going to be June 13th at 7 p.m. at Eagle Bank Arena. Um, there are We've gotten a question about tickets and um, limits. There's no limits. Um, we do have in the Cardinal Connections, we've put out a questionnaire about if you need handicap, um, accessible parking spots and seating, and, and that information will be coming out soon as um, we get the results from that. And then right there, what you can see is there's a link for Victor O'Neill Studios, who is going to be doing the photography for our event. And what they suggested is if you go to the website right now, you can subscribe. And so when you subscribe, they'll send you a text or an email as soon as those grad pictures are up, which may be really good for you all to just get that and be able to see the picture of, of your students. So I suggest that Victor O'Neill says all their families really love it just because then they're right in the know when the pictures are out. Go ahead, Ms. Pumphrey. All right, and then the last two kind of really important things, um, we'll talk to seniors here pretty soon in a senior assembly on April 18th, and we'll talk to them about this as well, but we are gonna have two mandatory graduation practices for seniors. It's gonna be June 9th and Monday, June 10th at 8 a.m. Their senior exams would have been finished by June 8th, so this would be the morning of the Friday and the Monday, and these are mandatory. You have to attend these in order to attend um, in order to participate in graduation. So really important to write these dates and times down, make sure your child is, and this would be at Gainesville High School in the auditorium is where we will meet. I don't know that I put that in there, but it's in the website and just make sure that they're there. It's really important. Um, the last thing we've been getting a lot of questions from students about um, oh, caps and gowns. Um, if you've ordered it, they are coming in. Jostens will be here to distribute during April 13th and 14th during lunches. And then they've also added a May date um, to distribute. And so if you ordered cap and gown, but also ordered senior swag or you ordered graduation announcements, they'll be able to distribute that at that time as well. So please look out for April 13th and 14th. And then I believe May 23rd is the other day that they're going to come in. So if you haven't ordered it, please order it as soon as possible. Um, it does take time, especially because we have that wonderful customized stole. And so we want to make sure that it comes in on time and your child is able to have a cap and gown for graduation. If it's not ordered, if they don't have a cap and gown for graduation, they're not going to be able to walk. So if you need help with that or anything, please reach out to your counselor or to myself with any questions. Um, and the last thing that the kids have been asking about is decor, and we're going to talk um, a little bit about that with them at the assembly. But if the kids want to decorate their cap, they are, are allowed to. It just has to be two-dimensional, and it will be pre-approved by administration um, at the graduation practice. If they're unsure about that design, we'll have kind of a process for them to come talk to us. But um, it does have to be pre-approved in 2D. That's it. 
Um, I have a couple of dates to share, um, also connected with our class of 2023, um, that counseling is helping to support with a little bit. Uh, Ms. Yearwood did mention on April 18th, we're having a senior assembly, and we're also going to be working with the students to complete their required senior survey. Um, we have to get 100% completion on that senior survey, so we'll be working with the students during that event and catching up with kids who may miss it. April 26 is going to be our very first decision day at Gainesville High School during all lunches. Very excited. Ms. Harris, our college and career counselor, is helping to plan that. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the PTSO because they've offered to support um, with a couple of gift cards. So we're, we're really grateful for the support of the PTSO. Um, also, April 29th is prom. Um, and if your child has received and received and accepted any scholarships, um, please have them complete the senior scholarship survey. It was out in the last Cardinal Connection. And there's also, if, you, if you're able to scan that QR code, and I believe they're putting um, in the chat, the senior scholarship survey enables us to know who we're going to be recognizing at senior scholarship night on May 30th. And kids have until May 16th to tell us. Um, any scholarship that they've received, if we don't hear about it, we don't know to recognize them. So it's really important that students complete that scholarship survey. And to be recognized um, by the May 30th event, we, we need to know by May 16th. It, it, this is a lot of moving parts. So please have your child complete that senior scholarship survey. So they got two surveys to worry about the senior survey and the senior scholarship survey. And then also another date that we'll have is our Radiance Awards, which is our school-wide awards um, for all of our students, recognizing them for their, by department, for their representation of Gainesville's values of lead, learn, care, and create. Um, and now I'm gonna hand it back over to Mr. Beach to talk a little bit about testing. So yeah, we're we're getting to the the business end of the school year. Uh, a reminder: parents, take a look at the chat feature. We've dropped some of the URLs for uh, useful resources and and sites um, that we've uh, described already. Um, also, use the Q and A feature if there's a question that uh, that you want to have answered. Don't don't be afraid of dropping that into the Q and A, and we can uh, we can answer that as we go. Um, so. Advanced placement and SOL testing. We're we're through the reading, sorry, we're through the writing SOL for the most part. We have a, a field test uh, that we have to administer, uh, um, sort of a sample test that uh, the Virginia Department of Education is um, going to deploy live next year. But after that, advanced placement tests begin uh, the first two weeks of May, and then SOL testing continues into the third week of May. Um, we will have a slightly different bell schedule for our SOL tests. Um, we, um, we do take attendance on assessment days. It's important that our students show up um, and obviously report back to class when they're done with their tests. Um, makeups are messy in the sense that we have to pull students from, and, and I'm speaking about SOLs now, we have to pull students from across um, subjects and find a location and the right time of day for students to make up an SOL. So I'm, I'm encouraging good attendance, good on-time attendance for SOL tests for students who have an SOL. Um, frankly, it, it's a better experience for everybody involved, not least of which the students. Um, so parents, if, if you can pay attention to the SOL calendar, make sure your, your student knows when their SOL test is gonna be administered and um, we'll do the best we can to, to address makeups if and when they occur. The AM and PM transportation considerations really apply to advanced placement testing. We're given very specific windows for our advanced placement, for when we must administer advanced placement tests. Um, we don't choose those windows, and those tests are timed and lengthy. So uh, the, the AM tests, the AM uh, advanced placement tests that we administer are going to start right at 7.30. So I'm stressing the importance for students to be here before the bell so that they can go to their test location at 7.30 and start shortly thereafter. In the afternoon, um, our afternoon AP tests have almost zero chance of ending before 2.10 in the afternoon. So a student who has prescribed an, an afternoon advanced placement test is going to have to think about how they're going to get home after the test. Um, those tests are published, the dates and times are published already by subject, um, but I don't want students to have a nasty surprise if they leave a test environment at 3.30, 4 o'clock, and, and they're struggling to get home afterwards. So 
plan ahead. Um, if, if there's any problem solving we can do with you, give us a shout. Okay, so here's the calendar that, that we have developed and we will publish this um, as soon as we're able to on our website. This will go out to, this has gone out to all of our teachers. So this is for SOL testing. If students are to take an SOL um, for a class, we will test by period number. So for example, students in biology one, generally speaking, have a, a biology one SOL. And if a student has that class during period five, that test will occur on May 8th. If a student's in algebra one, chances are they're, they're gonna have an SOL. And if they're in that class in period six, then they would have their SOL test on May 9th and so on and so forth. Um, so we're testing by class period. Um, we'll have some retakes for seniors who need them and then some retakes for underclassmen who need them towards the end of May. But in essence, SOLs will take place, sorry, Ms. Pomfret, between May 8th and May 19th. This is our AP test schedule. Again, it's written by the College Board. This is prescribed to us. Our students should know already uh, when these tests are occurring. Um, as you can see, Monday, May 1st, we've got US government in the morning. Um, uh, students will have, if students have both government and AP chemistry, they'll have a, a quick lunch and then the chemistry test will start at 12 noon. Um, that chemistry test will go past 2.10 in the afternoon. Um, all of these tests, I believe, with few to no exceptions, will occur in the auditorium. Admin team, am I, am I right in saying that? The auditorium is our test location for all of these examinations? Yes, okay. Um, but again, teachers will communicate that with our students. So that's the AP test schedule. And then we'll move on from there back to Ms. Pomfret. Um, so in Dr. Scott, unfortunately, cannot be with us tonight. So he's asked me to talk to you a little bit about um, give a quick pathways update. Um, our pathways program is growing and we're bringing in about 100 transfer students that are going to be joining Gainesville High School in the fall. Um, so that's very exciting to have those students coming in. Um, if you have a rising 11th or 12th grader and they are interested in doing an extended learning experience this summer, whether it's internships, doing a creative project, doing a special camp, or doing some leadership or community service, please have them talk with Dr. Scott um, before the end of the year so that he can work with them to help um, kind of integrate that into some of the schoolwork that they're already doing. Um, Dr. Scott's office is in the extended learning space, which is up on the second floor near World Languages, and he's always eager to speak with students. So if they've got any questions, please send them his way. Um, and uh, you get to hear a little bit more from me talking as we're closing out academic advising for the year. Um, we've seen just about everybody. Um, we still have a few students that we're trying to see and trying to get everybody um, completely seen before spring break. Please check um, if you know your child's been seen, please check in parent or student view and click on course request and you, sh you should see their request listed in there. Um, if for some reason it's not working, feel free to reach out to me, but you should see your child's um, request there. Um, on our counseling canvas page, there's a button that looks, it says the academic advising 2324. I ask you to look in there. There's a ton of resources that we put together, um, including a podcast that some of our counselors did, an amazing online elective guide. And we've pushed these things out through canvas multiple times and through Cardinal Connections. But um, if you haven't seen it yet, please go take a look at it. I also wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about our advanced academic programs. We're really proud about the increase, um, especially in our AP participation. Um, Mr. Beach noted earlier today, we've gone from about 200 AP tests in our first year to next year, we are on tap to get over about 2000 AP exams. Um, it's extremely impressive to see the challenge and the rigor that our students are looking to take on. Um, we are invested in incorporating more dual enrollment classes as we continue to grow and continue to develop our programs. Um, we are continuing to develop the Teachers for Tomorrow dual enrollment program that Ms. Warbrum has been doing. It's a fantastic program if you have a child that's interested in becoming an educator. Um, so we will continue to develop those programs. Um, I also wanted to mention a program that the county um, actually runs. It's called Early Online College, and this is in conjunction with NOVA. 
These are free dual enrollment class, not, excuse me, they are not dual enrollment, excuse me. They are free college credit classes that your child can earn through NOVA. Um, there's no cost. There might be a book cost here and there. Um, they when, And I stuttered a little bit on the dual enrollment because they don't earn Prince William County credit on their transcript, but they do earn credit through NOVA for free. There's a fall and a spring session. That information typically comes out in the summer for rising juniors and seniors. Um, I believe we have a link in the chat that um, takes you directly to the Prince William County Early Online College um, page. They have a wonderful video. They have kind of a sample of the classes that they'll offer in the future. So I highly recommend if you're interested in classes at NOVA to check out the Early Online College program. Um, kind of pivot back a little bit to academic advising. The last day that we will accept course request changes for the 23-24 school year is May 5th, okay? So May 5th, May 5th, May 5th. Need you to check those course requests in student and parent view. The change request form that you can submit changes can be found on the counseling canvas page. So please, 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 I need you to double, triple check our work to make sure that the course requests are right and then submit any changes through that course request form. It takes us a couple of days to, to process those requests, so be patient with us. But if you keep an eye on parent and student view, you should see those changes when they're processed. The reason that we really hold to that no changes once the school year starts is these requests serve as your child's reservations. Um, they're like, it's like you're booking dinner reservations, um, you're booking seats at a restaurant. And if you suddenly change your mind in August, I, I haven't built a table for you. Um, so it's so important that we know in advance what your child wants and why that May 5th deadline is important. Um, they also feed into our budget and our staffing considerations. It is challenging right now um, to find it, you know, to hire teachers for all areas. So we really want to have um, high quality instruction at Gainesville High School and your child's requests drive those decisions. Um, and we also want to see your child really commit to challenge. So if they're trying an AP class or an advanced coursework class, we, we're not we want to see them try it out. We want to see them stick it out for a little bit because we know when we've seen the pattern that once ch children get through about four to six weeks of a class and things settle down, they're usually up for the challenge. Not recommending six or seven AP classes or advanced classes. That's a lot for a kid. Um, but if we can find that appropriate balance, we want to see them stick it out. And then my last little bit I think you're going to hear from me is um, if you have any rising ninth graders in your life or any family members or friends, we are having our new student open house on April 27th, and we are very excited to welcome the class of 2027. Okay, back to me. Um, we have um, for probably 12 months been discussing the possibility of a, a, um, a schedule change or a bell change at Gainesville High School. We have sent out a survey to all of our students in the school. Um, we've engaged in several um, conversations with faculty and staff in the building. And then our principals advisory councils talked about um, some options uh, at a couple of our recent principals advisory council meetings. And, and um, although it's hard to build 100% uh, consensus behind any idea, there is a good amount of energy behind modifying our bell schedule next year to incorporate a, uh, a period of time where each of our classes go meets for an additional block of time, about 45 minutes, for the purpose of um, remediation, reteaching, relearning, uh, potentially reassessment, and, and allowing students for ex extension activities. Um, we're calling this NEST. Um, that's the, the working name of this block of time. Um, we are moving away from calling it FLEX because FLEX would suggest students can go where they choose to go in the building and um, teachers could be overrun in some areas and not have students in another. But in essence, if you look at the uh, bell schedule on the left-hand side of this screen, we would go through four periods each day. On one of our days, we would go through periods uh, one, three, five, and seven, normal blocks. On the opposing day, the, the other day of our two-day rotation, we would go period two. Then we would go to our nest period. 
and and um, in a rotation, the classes that we have in our day would meet for 45 minutes to give um, a repackaging of instructional minutes for teachers to stop the train, reteach something, reassess something, go back over an assessment. It's a it's a block of time where teachers get to take a breath with with their students and address any learning deficits that may exist or assessment deficits that may exist. We're also planning to build into that rotation an advisory period and an advisory period would not be tied to any academic area. We would assign smaller groups of students, 20 to 23 students to a teacher. And those classes would meet about once every eight days for 45 minutes with the goal of teachers and students in the classroom building connections with each other, supporting each other, building a community. If we have school-wide initiatives, we could address them um, in that advisory period. If we gave the division-wide survey, um, if we wanted to share information about, about an, an initiative or, or maybe something from the school counseling office that every student uh, would need to see, we could use that advisory block to take care of some of that administrative um, need. And we would have stakeholders, teachers in the building and students to generate lessons to fill in the black, the, the gaps. So we would have students perhaps propose note taking strategies that every teacher could teach across the building as a skill set that all of our students would benefit from, et cetera, et cetera. So we would infuse useful lessons through the year. Um, the advisory period would meet somewhere in the region of 15 or 16 times during the year. And again, we try to take care of um, support, building relationships, um, school-wide initiatives, and then obviously other gaps that we think students could benefit from seeing or learning about. So more to come. Um, I'll stress again for our students, this is not a study hall. This is not a time where students can just do nothing. Um, our instructional time is too important to allow for that. This is um, instructional time that will have a lesson plan but the teachers get a chance just to slow down the pace of instruction, loop back around and take care of any needs that students have. Hopefully so that students need to spend less time after school getting help if they need help. Um, so that's our proposed schedule for next year. We're still going through um, getting stakeholder input and uh, more to come as we go through the spring. Okay, athletics and activities, um, really just a small amount of information for, for this slide. Um, the information that's relevant to uh, activities and athletics is on the GainesvilleCardinals.com website. Um, schedules, scores, rosters are there. Um, contact information for our coaching staff and a list of clubs and organizations that have been approved for activity in the school. There are also uh, pieces of information for physicals and concussion, et cetera, concussion training um, on that website. So student athletes, pay attention to it. Um, there's going to be good information as we move through this season, but obviously gearing up for preseason for the fall season of the 23-4 school year as well. Uh, here's a, an omnibus slide of some things that are on the horizon. Um, this conference uh, address many of these. The end of the third grading period is uh, is coming up, as is spring break. Hope everybody gets a chance to to take some some time off and uh, and relax over the spring break. Um, decision day we've talked about, uh, along with new student open house. Prom is April 29th. Ticket sales will probably begin for our seniors before spring break, i.e. next week. So we're going to have a, a protracted um, purchasing window we will probably shut down ticket sales several days before prom so that we can um, take the digital sales, the online sales, and turn them into getting tickets into our students' hands, paper tickets into our students' hands. Uh, the testing calendar we've talked about, uh, obviously at the end of, the, of May, we have a, a holiday, and then we've got our award ceremonies and graduation as we move into June. Uh, and that's that's it from us. Um, if you have a minute to fill out the survey, um, we appreciate your feedback. Again, if these are helpful, um, 35 minute updates, um, let us know that. If there are different pieces of information that you would like to see or hear, let us know that too. Uh, we're going to stick around to answer any questions you have. So the Q&A will be open for a couple of minutes. 
And likewise, if you have a question that's um, specific to you or your family um, and it wasn't addressed tonight, please don't hesitate to email us or call anybody that's in um, from the admin team that's in the, the, the webinar tonight. Uh, we'll get right back to you with the best response we can. So again, let us know if this is helpful. Let us know if you have any questions. Otherwise, thanks for your support as ever. Uh, we're proud of the work our students are doing. Um, there's a lot of outstanding work going on inside and outside of our classrooms. And I want to give a plug with that in mind to our performing arts program, who are um, the MEA Blue Ribbon uh, Performing Arts Program. So each of our upper level performing arts groups scored um, superior ratings at their assessments recently, which is a big deal. So um, students in the room, if, you, if you're part of those groups, thanks for your hard work and congratulations. Again, have a good night and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.